In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I'm pre-sprouting my anemones and my ranunculars. I'm also going to quickly run through which ones I've got and from where. Some of them are bargain basement and some of them are not so much. Um, but let's see how we get on. I'm looking forward to a really early crop of beautiful flowers. Now, I have planted these before I realised about the pre-soaking method. And some of them came up and some of them didn't. And I don't know what, what uh, factors uh, um, caused the difference in there, but I suspect um, that it was too dry. The spring that I remember planting most of them in was a very dry one. And of course, um, once they have sprouted in particular, um, they must be kept watered. Um, and I did also plant them in pots, which would have exacerbated any dryness um, if I wasn't on top of it. So having said that, they did sprout. And I think I've got another couple, maybe where I haven't dug the corms up, uh, struggling to come back. So whether they prefer naturalising in your ground, I don't know. I'm, I think what you would call in America around a zone seven here in the UK. Um, so I'm in the southeast of England where we have a pretty Mediterranean summer climate, really, if we don't get a lot of rain, um, which we did last year, but isn't common. Um, and our winters, uh, we have maybe one or two snaps of frost, really hard frost. And that's usually it. Occasionally we get snow, but by no means it's guaranteed every year, despite what the fairy tales tell you about the UK. Um, here in the South, we don't particularly get a lot of snow very often. It's a maybe once every three year event or something like that. So um, that's our climate. So anyway, having watched obviously a number of YouTube videos about these beautiful flowers. So I saw the pre-soaking method. So that's what I'm going to do today. So look at my um, anemones. Look at these beauties. So I've got a range of sort of the mix. So this one is called um, uh, Bridget Mix, St. Bridget Mix here. So it looks almost the same as these, but it's not. So these ones that are, I've got multiple packs of, I'm just going to soak together in a jar but I will separate out these blues. I don't know whether I need to do that. I mean, the, the kind of area I'm probably going to plant these, it wouldn't really matter if I shoved them all together. But um, I think just for my own experimentation purposes, it'll be easier for me to work out what works and what didn't work if I do plant them separately. So I've got a range here from cool blues right up to the, and then I've got the mixed, even though these are two varieties. And then I've got this pink at the end, and that's how I've uh, done the same with the ranunculus, which are soaked, pre-soaked in the same way. And I've just got these regular bog standard uh, bargain store ranunculus, so we'll see how they do. In fact, I know that the ones I bought that came up without any pre-soaking, albeit a little bit uh, random and thin on the ground, were the cheap store ones. Um, so... We'll see. And then I've got this uh, moving over to a specific orange one. I wasn't wasn't over sure about this colour, so I only bought one packet. And then I've got the pinks and I've got another pink, which I bought on Amazon. These were bought on Amazon. Uh, let's, uh, well, I've opened the whites, so I'll show you. And then I've got these, I thought these were the best. If I'd seen these first, I probably just would have bought a whole load of these. <laughs> and then right down to white. So if I just, and these came from Amazon, they're obviously a, an independent supplier. I don't think they came through Prime, pretty sure they didn't, but they were really sweet with the little, nice little um, eco-friendly wrapping. I mean, why have more wrapping than this? You don't need it. Um, and then inside look a little, so these were really sweet look. Oh, it says in here, funnily enough, here's the, I didn't see that when I uh, first opened it. So it does say pre-soak overnight. Um, 
and plant with the fingers pointing down. So we're not going to soak them overnight. I'm going to soak them now for about four hours, which is four to six hours. So there they are. They're quite small. I've seen people starting the tubers bigger, but never mind. You know, we can keep them. They grow each year. So I thought they were quite sweet. Um, I know that's not normally what you would expect from Amazon. Um, I'll put a link to these in the description below. So um, to pre-soak all these, I'm going to So I'm just basically going to write on these labels before I do anything else. And then I'm going to put each one in a jar like that so that I know which variety it is when I come to soak it. So I will quickly do that. And it's such a cute name, look. Mr. Ruffle Blue. How cute is that? So I'm going to start with the biggest jar with um, these mixed ones because um, I have the most of these because they were kind of cheap and you know funky and I thought the amount I use for painting you know although I may do a farmer's market if I you know if I have a decent amount of flowers but we have a local one near me which I could use so here they are so I hope there's enough room because obviously they're going to swell up I don't know whether that one's going to work look for instance so you know but I think for these prices you're going to expect some duds now if I get more than 50% of duds, I won't be buying them again. It's as simple as that. So, um, you know, I will record these results in my, my famous gardening book, which you can also buy on Amazon. Um, so I've started recording everything in here. So that's sort of, it starts here. And then you can, you have each season is color coded like this, you see, so you can just flick to the right part. And then at the end you have notes and you have your supplier section where you can, um, fill in where you get everything from but I thought really for the amount of flowers that I'm doing I might do a different book and I did don't forget to mention that it's actually quite waterproof this cover so you can take I've had it out in the garden in the rain had it splashed with all sorts and it's still okay anyway that's just a side note so that's one down And the other thing you have to do with this is um, oxygenate the water and um, you know people go to great lengths to do that with fish pumps and all sorts but really oxygenating the water just means um, adding more oxygen so you know every hour or so dump the water and with a nice fresh stream of um, water fill up fill the jar up again and you know what I would do is put it under the tap and let the old water come out and the new water go in and that's just a way of oxygenating it and keeping it clean of bacteria. We'll have a look back. I'm going to stir them around make sure they're nice and wet. Check the time. That's the first one done there. So we'll fast forward through all these
Here they all are. They actually did soak for about six hours. So I'm going to, because I can't tell just by looking at them here, they still look quite small. So what I will do is I'll just put a split screen beside these so that you can see that they've swollen up, which they must certainly have. Let's put those back in there so I don't mix them up. So I decided that I'm going to sprout these all separately as they are with their labels because I just think it will be easier in the long run when it comes to deciding where I'm going to plant them. The first thing I'm going to do is move them out of the way. And I'm going to just moisten this ever so lightly here. In fact, it's got a bit of moisture in, so I'm just going to mix it to see that you mustn't over. So not like when I did my seed compost, but I think I am just going to add a bit more. I might as well use this because I know it's clean because I, I did clean these out about three or four times. I changed the water and I swilled them round so that they would be nice and oxygenated. It's nice and damp. Right, so that looks about right. It's kind of damp but not sort of soggy um, it's wet it can clump but it, it's not sort of dripping wet so i'm going to use these foil trays because as you know i'm trying to reduce the amount of plastic i use and also they're an awful lot cheaper than you know gardening trays for the same price i get two of these for 69p all right so i'm going to put just um i'm just going to cover the bottom i don't want to do a huge layer because i probably won't have enough soil for that so what I do is I just want to layer it like a lasagna, I guess. And I want the minced beef, so to speak, to cover the bottom like so. Just enough that the um, roots are encouraged to do something. And then I'm going to take so we'll start with the ranunculus orange. I'll just tip them in. And then I'm going to take the, the little roots and point them down like so. So, but they're not, we're not intending to grow them in here. We just want them to be stimulated to root so that when we put them out in the garden, they've got a good strong root system, which is also why we're going to put them in a cool, dark place to encourage the roots rather than the greens to grow first. So by the time they go out, I mean, this is pretty much a principle in, in, in all germinating plants, really. You want a strong root system before you want the green to pop up because Otherwise, um, it, the, the roots can't support what's what's growing. And then we'll just put a light covering <clears throat> again to just encourage the roots and not the, and this is quite dry, but that's fine because it will counteract any, if I put too much moisture in the base layer. And I will check these every day. And that's it. Put that back in that's not going to stand up so i'll have to put it in sideways like that and then that's it that can go in my garage so that is where i'm going to put them 
and then I just repeated the process for all the varieties until I think I ended up with about oh my god I don't know eight ten trays full of these sprouting I put them in the garage which I'll show you in a minute but I actually think that might be too warm we're having a really mild winter so I may put them in the chicken coop I don't have the heating on in the garage. It does have a tumble dryer and a washing machine and various things that keep it a bit warmer. It's more insulated. And I think with the milder uh, weather, it feels like spring already. It's early February. I think this may actually be too warm. Um, so I'm, I'm just toying with the idea of moving them all into the chicken coop after all that. All right, so you can hear the washing machine on and the dryer so I hope that doesn't make it too dry for them oh I can see that because the light was so bright where I was filming I didn't quite cover those so I might have to go back and do that I couldn't quite see because as I say I had the light so bright and since filming this uh, last week I think it was sorry about the dodgy camera work um I I have been checking these every day to make sure they're not drying out because I didn't over moisten them and you know I am concerned it's a little bit too warm we've had like you know 10 12 degrees or more sunny days really warm I mean my she she seeds are taking off in the uh, winter bottles outside so um like I say, I think it's a little bit too warm. I mean, if it's 12 degrees outside, that's already kind of in the upper range of too warm. And it's going to be a lot warmer in the garage. So I think the final resting place for these, which I will do tomorrow, is I'm going to move them into the chicken coop where there is just thin wood walls and there's a lot more exposure to the elements. Um, it's going to be cooler and darker in there too. So that's what I'll be doing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again with an update video soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.